Hey guys, welcome to another episode about R programming. In today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to parse JSON and how to deal with uh, JSON. And for that purpose, we are going to uh, work with two libraries. We are going to work with uh, JSON Lite and with RJSON. So if you don't have those, please install them. And now let's get to work. First, I'm going to use JSON Lite. And I'm going to create object G. Example.json. Uh, this example.json is this file uh, from our previous episode. In order to get data in better form, we are going to convert to data frame and we are going to print this out. I'm going to put this line in here and now I'm going to detach this JSON light. And I'm going to unload it. Now load library R JSON. And likewise we are going to load this from the file but with function from json and in here we have to provide optional argument file and now we're going to provide path of course we are going to convert this to data frame And I'm going to print all of this out. So this is our result. Let me show you how this looks like. So this is a result uh, from JSON Lite, and this is a result uh, from R JSON. And what is the main difference? Uh, JSON Lite uh, takes uh, every element of our array, and let me show you. In here we have array score for both of people and what JSON Lite actually is doing. It creates another column uh, for uh, every element of the array. So uh, we have a person score right here, first element 12, second 25 and third 37. And of course for a uh, second person we have uh, first score, second score and third score. And with our JSON, what actually we have in here? You see, a uh, person score uh, contains uh, three elements, creates one row for every element of the array. So this is basically the uh, only difference between these two. So if you have some small chunk of data, uh, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, but if you would like to arrange this data a little bit better, uh, this uh, form looks terribly ugly. So we have to do something about it. And the best way to rearrange this is actually to write some code in order to turn this result into something pretty. So let me show you how you are going to do that. Well, we could go with uh, any of uh, these two uh, libraries, but I would like our JSON better. So I'm going to delete this part. And let's get to work. So uh, what I want to do in here, if you take a look, uh, score, it's actually fifth column. And not only that, uh, score for every person, it's every fifth column column. So fifth column contains scores uh, for uh, first uh, person 
and tenth column uh, contains score for second person. Uh, you don't have to worry uh, about uh, second and third row for other columns because those data are same. And how we are going to use this? Let me show you. I'm going to create variable iteration. And I'm going to take a number of uh, columns uh, from uh, our uh, object, from our data frame, and I'm going to divide that by five. So uh, it completely doesn't matter if you have uh, 10 people, two people or 100 people, this piece of code is going to work. And what is going to be a result uh, for this calculation? Uh, actually, number of people we have in our JSON object. And now I'm going to create another data frame. In this reform data frame, uh, we are going to append a uh, new data. And now I'm going to create one for loop. From one to iteration so uh, first thing that I would like to do is to create another variable score and to score I'm going to add a list of object J and all of rows and columns X times 5 so what this actually means, means that I'm going to take all of rows from this column and uh, what this column actually is. In first iteration, uh, X is going to be one. Uh, so uh, with first iteration, we are going to uh, take values from column number five. Uh, so we are going to take uh, scores from first person. And in second iteration, uh, X is going to be two. So we are going to take uh, values from column number 10. And what we have in column number 10 uh, scores for second person. And now I'm going to create another variable, let's say R1 for row. And I'm going to use function CBind. Uh, CBind stands for uh, column bind to uh, whatever is already present in object R1, we are going to append J and just write what I'm writing. I'm going to explain what I'm doing later on. One comma X minus one times five plus one. Okay, I know that this looks uh, terribly confusing, but it's actually uh, really simple. Uh, let me explain. What value is inside uh, this cell of our data frame? So we are dealing with the uh, first row. And this second value, it's actually indexed for column. And what we have in here, X minus one. Uh, in first iteration, X is going to be one. So one minus one uh, is going to be zero. Zero times five, zero, plus one, one. Uh, so what we are going to do, we are going to get value from first row and first column. And what that value is, it's actually name from first person. In second iteration, X is going to be two. So two minus one, one times five, five plus one, six. Uh, what is uh, contained uh, in uh, column number six? In column number six, we could find name for second person. So we are going to find this value, Mick. And now I am going to copy this four times. Don't worry, I'm going to explain everything. So uh, now, we are going to change some values in here.
So what this actually means? Let me explain this uh, third column. So in first iteration, x is going to be 1. 1 minus 1, 0. 0 times 5, uh, 0. Plus 3, 3. So uh, in uh, third uh, column, what we actually have? We have age. So we are going to uh, append to object R1, age from first person. And so on. And at the end, we are going to see bind to object R1 scores. So we are going to bind scores at the end, at fifth column. And now we are going to R bind. R bind stands for row bind to reformed this object R1. And at the end, I am going to rename uh, columns uh, for a data frame. Call names for reformed. And first column is going to be name. Second is going to be S name. Then age. Then HY. And at the end, course and of course we are going to print this out and if I run our code uh, yeah typo let's try again ah uh, yeah I have to create actual object I'm sorry This R1 have to be defined as list. Yeah, typo once again. I hope that now everything is fine. <laughs> yeah, it is. So uh, as you can see, uh, this looks much better, much, much better. Uh, well, you don't have to be afraid uh, from uh, this code. Sometimes uh, you have to uh, make your hands a little bit dirty, but all of that is life. So uh, if you are satisfied with this content, please subscribe and see ya.